Colonel, thank you for joining us today at Soldier Technology. Um, you mentioned that the role that you're in at the moment is changing and the role of the, the Army is actually changing quite a lot. Um, can you perhaps provide some more detail on that? Yeah, as part of the defence transformation uh, that's going through at the moment, although this is evolving and we're not quite sure exactly what the, uh, how it's going to work in practice, um, it's becoming pretty clear that um, the, uh, the, there'll be a disaggregation of, of responsibilities from uh, the core MOD head office in, in Whitehall out to uh, the frontline commands. And, and what that means for me is that um, we think that in Army headquarters, uh, our responsibilities for uh, up to Cat A projects, so Cat A projects 400 million and above will remain an MOD function, but for smaller projects than that, uh, which is the vast majority of dismantled close combat business, um, that the uh, responsibility for uh, the articulating the requirement uh, and for de delivering the, the, the program to that will come down to, uh, to the Army headquarters. And this is a, a great opportunity for us actually. Uh, because it means that uh, we're going to, uh, for the first time in a few years, we're going to be able to link together the user at, at the far end, which I represent at the moment, together with the person who's setting the requirement at the front end. Uh, and therefore, we're, we're quite excited about this. And, and we're, we're still evolving, as I said, in, in the detail of what this is going to look like. But um, this, this should be in place by April next year. OK, it sounds, it sounds like, like you say, a very big change. And surely there are benefits that come with that, perhaps would you say more relevance and faster capability delivery, do you think? Um, I think that uh, from, the, from our perspective, uh, I, the, the, the job that's being done by the, by the MOD at the moment is, is absolutely sound. But I think there are, as I said, I think there are opportunities. And um, whether it's speed, uh, may be difficult to say, but, uh, but I think that having a, a requirement that is being uh, articulated uh, by the user at the other end is going to be really quite useful and, and, and I think there is a, a genuine opportunity there to, to, to consider capabilities more in the round because I own, um, as, as it is at the moment, I don't own any of the capabilities but it's my job to integrate across the defence lines development. So it might be that we identify a capability gap that isn't actually best plugged by a new piece of equipment. It's best plugged by um, adjusting our training slightly or by rewriting our doctrine and, and, and incorporating a different lesson into that and therefore we, we, we have the opportunity to play tunes across the defence lines of development in order to integrate uh, the capability better so I think that's probably the, 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 the real advantage of, 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 the, of this, uh, this slight adjustment as far as the outside world is probably concerned. Okay and what, um, what implications do you think that might have for industry in terms of developing Help, well, working with you to develop a solution, whether it be training or equipment or whatever it may be. I think from I think from the industry perspective, it, there shouldn't be a massive amount of difference um, because in the end, uh, the in industry will continue to work with uh, DENS down down at Abbey Wood. Uh, from my perspective, um, we, uh, we we we'd like to use the Infantry Trials Development Unit at Warminster uh, as very much as our shop window into industry and vice versa and projects such as Urbex, which is very well supported by industry at the moment, um, fully intend will continue in order to see what te technology is out there that we need to be exploiting um, and, and also giving uh, industry a, a good window into what the army requirement is. So I, I think the, there, we are very keen to, to bolster the role of the Infantry Trials Development Unit and actually on behalf of my boss, the Armoured Trials Development Unit down at Bobbington as well and continue to use those as our, as our shop window into industry and vice versa. Yeah, great, thank you very much. Thank Finally though, if, if there is one thing you could say perhaps about the Soldier Techn Technology Show, um, you have one reason that you, you're here today, what would that be? Well, it's my first one, uh, and that's only because I've been in the job for, for five months. I found it really interesting because um, I think it's a, a unique opportunity to get together uh, policy makers, program managers uh, and project managers uh, on, from the military side, uh, together with um, allies and partners internationally uh, who are thr struggling with exactly the same problems that we're struggling with, together with industry. And, and what I'm particularly uh, pleased to see is we also have a few practitioners floating about. It's, rather, it's a few a couple of years now since I was uh, out there on the ground myself, but we've got corporals from the Royal Marines, uh, sergeants from my lot in, in, in ITDU, and a couple of soldiers from Telemark Battalion in, in, in Norway who actually are the real experts in dismounted close combat. So we've got, I think, that, that all bases covered at this place. And, and I find it 
really useful to be able to get away from the day job and think about uh, dismounted close combat in a bit more depth uh, with, a, a no, with a number of real subject matter experts. And I'm really impressed as well by the, the level of innovation that, I, that I'm seeing uh, from, from our industry partners at, at this, uh, this conference. It's, it's, it's you know, absolutely fascinating. If I had a blank checkbook, which I don't, I'd, I think I'd have been wandering around and it'd be empty by now. Sure. Great. Perfect. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you.